Hi BDGC, I'm Julie Go. And I'm Felix. And um, we're from the MIT Media Lab and we're presenting sensory fiction to you. We did this project with Alexis Hope, who couldn't be here today, but she says hi too. We were enrolled in a class last fall uh, called Science Fiction to Science Fabrication that was taught by Sophia Bruckner and Dan Novi. And basically the class uh, encouraged us to use science fiction as an inspiration to create functional prototypes, but also as a way to explore uh, the ethical and social implication of the technologies we create. A caricature of a woman, burning, melting, obsessed with true love trying over 20 double thousand miles to reach her beloved. Sensory fiction for us was really three things. Um, it was about a new way of experimenting with wearable technology um, that is not just measuring data and biometrics, but also augmenting our sensory experience. Then secondly, um, it was definitely an exploration of some ideas that we saw in the readings. And it's a project to spark discussions about the sometimes mindless adaptation of new technologies. Our first inspiration of the readings was The Diamond Age by Neil Stevenson, um, and that's a very direct inspiration. So in the book, the protagonist uses a book which is intelligent, and it's called The Primer. It has these magical qualities that um, allow her to learn and experience life through the book. And we also read another short story um, called The Girl Who Was Plucked In by James Tiptree, um, and that's a short story um, that deals with experiencing the world through the body of another person. And it's really an amazing example of the power of fiction to make us feel and empathize with another protagonist. So sensory fiction for us was not a way to replace the reader's imagination or the author's ability to make us feel, but it's, uh, to complement it, to complement any type of like experiences that we can have. Um, so we think it's also a good way to start a conversation between the physical and digital space that we inhabit. We used um, the Arduino microcontroller to interface with different types of actuators that were um, placed around the user's body. And there were two Paltier junctions that were placed on the collarbones to create a heat or cold, coldish sensation. And um, we had a compression system around the waist um, that was built with self-met airbags and a little air pump that then was controlled also by the Arduino and little valves. And we used vibrating motors to influence the wearer's heartbeat. There were some on, on the body and actually also two in the book. And there's some research that shows that heartbeats can be synced or at least accelerated when in proximity to another pulse. And that pulse can also be artificially created by something simple as our vibrating motors. And yeah. So for the book itself, um, the cover has 150 programmable LEDs that are programmed to react in patterns to the atmosphere of the story. And then we've got page sensing that is done through light, light sensors, which knows which page you're on. Um, so that we can swap the events and the moods. We would ideally like to have eye tracking software so that we could know each, what word you're on or what sentence you're on, as opposed to just what page you're on. So for example, the way we use the technology we implemented is um, at some point in the story, the character falls in love. So we made the exterior of the book reflect a pulsing red pinkish light which was synchronized to a heartbeat that you were wearing and the heartbeat um, quickened to intensify and simulate the rush of falling in love. 
we also had a scene in which the character is in a crowd and she's being press, like pressed on. So we used the airbag to represent that sensation by creating pressure and constricting the reader's waist. Um, another example is um, the character is also locked up in a cold, damp cellar. So we use the Peltier Junction to create a really cold, chilling effect on your collarbone so that you would feel as if you're in that cellar too. For us, it kind of felt like the current state of wearable technologies is that there's a lot of excitement, but there are still very few examples of successful implementations. And historically, we think that's kind of normal because whenever new mediums are introduced, it takes a while before useful form factors or use cases are determined by us, I guess, the designers. Um, while the length of those periods is, is getting shorter with every new technology that is being introduced, there's also a risk that those new technologies might be just adapted rather mindlessly instead of critically thinking about if we actually want that kind of technology. So for us, this project wasn't a wearable technology project, but it was a way of experimenting how we can have sensory feedback. Um, so one of the way we see wearable technology going further is that it's an obvious evolution of the technology we have now and of the jewelry and accessories field and fashion because of just the opportunities and the miniaturization of electronics. So we were we would hope as designers that um, this would allow us to focus more on the physical presence and the physical proximity that we have as opposed to the distant digital presence that um, we have right now with all our gadget and screens in front of us. Thank you guys for listening to our video. Um, we hope that you have a fun time at the conference and we hope that uh, you enjoyed our project and that it helps you think critically about the future of technology. Bye. Bye.